Hi, welcome to Booking Through Life. I'm Mary, and this is my June wrap-up. I read, I think I read 10 books. Oh, I read 11 books. I'm only going to talk about six of them because uh, Pride and Premeditation, Pride and Prescience, Jane and the Unpleasant of Scargrave Manor, Pride, Prejudice, and Peril, I already talked about those in my last video, so I'm not going to talk about those again. <laughs> but I am going to talk about the others. So here we go. The first book I read in June was A Hangover from the Around the World in 80 Days Challenge with Miriam at Miriam Elizabeth Reads. And I was traveling to Japan, and I read Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukagawa. I loved this book. I gave it a five star. Before I go on, let's say that it's translated by Alison Watts. And it's about these three characters. There's Santaro, and he is a, a cook. He, he, makes the, he makes the sweet bean paste or the sweet bean. Um, they're kind of wrapped in uh, a pancake, and then you eat them as a dessert. I was going to have one. And, and ha show it. Um, maybe I will have it a di at a different time. But he also, he owes a debt to the owners of the, su of the sweet bean paste shop. Um, I can't remember what the shop's called. But he owes them a debt. So he's working and he's doing something that he doesn't, doesn't really want to do. He wanted to be a writer, but he's kind of stuck there. And he doesn't make very good sweet bean paste. And one day, this older woman named Toku, Tok, Tok, it's T-O-K-U-E. Sorry to anybody who's Japanese. I don't know how to say it. Um, and she's an elderly woman, and she wants to work for him. He doesn't really think that he should hire her, but she kind of just keeps showing up, and he kind of has a hard time with boundaries, and she ends up working with him. And she has something wrong with her hands. And he's afraid that people will see and that it will um, scare them away. So he really wants her to stay in the back. But she really wants to interact with especially the young kids. And she becomes an endearing character. And then one of the young kids is Wakana. And she's a 14-year-old girl and she's kind of poor. Her mom's um, a single mom. And they all kind of become like family with each other over the sweet bean paste. And I don't want to tell you too much, but this made me cry. Um, it was very heartwarming. It's very sweet. Um, it, it's very, it's short. It does not, doesn't take um, a whole lot. Here's, I have on my, um, on my book, my big gigantic book journal, I, I make a little reaction. And here's what I wrote. Heartwarming, warming, not warming, heartwarming and tragic, three wounded and alone people of different generations come together. And Sukagawa tells the story of the value of human life. It isn't just that we're productive, it's that we each individual, even if we're, we have, you know, um, hands that are that are disformed or disfigured, even if we have a, a background of debt and trouble, even if um, we are just a poor single, you know, a poor kid in, in life, we all have value. I, it's just very good. Highly recommend this book. Such a sweet book. The next book I wrote was a spinster wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not a writer. The next book I read was A Spinster's Guide to Dangers and Danger and Dukes by Mandy Collins. And I read her other book, although I didn't really remember that I had read it until afterward when I was thinking about it. And that was An Heiress's Guide to Deception and Desire. And um, so this has some of the same characters, but it focuses the focus shifts to a different character and makes that character and gives her a love story. And it was re really entertaining. I liked Poppy, the main character, 
and Lord Langham, the, the love interest. Um, I wished it would have stayed clean. There's one open door scene. I just wish that we didn't um, we didn't have that. And I have that this one has young Sherlock Holmes vibes too. This is the second book I read this month that had some young Sherlock Holmes vibes. So anyway, yeah. It, it was cute. I gave it three stars. I liked it. Okay, then I read some mysteries. The next book I read was called The Painting of Sarah DeVos by Dominic Smith. And maybe I'll have a floating book cover right here because um, a friend of mine, did I check that out at the library? I checked that out a at the library. I read this with my two art friends. It was the second art book that we read together in our art book book club. <laughs> and um, it was I'd give it a three plus. It was good. It's It's got dual timelines. It's about, it kind of has a dual timeline and a dual timeline within one of the timelines. So what do I mean by that? So you're following, um, a, I think it's 16th century, 17th century, um, 15th century. I don't remember. It's one of those um, Dutch painter a woman, female painter. And it's this is not a true story. This is a novel. But the 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 woman who's the painter, Sarah DeVos, she's kind of a conglomeration of what of some different um Dutch female Dutch painters of that time. And oh it's sixteen thirty seven. And so um she has one painting that people know of and then they think she kind of just fell off the planet. Maybe, she, you know, she probably died, um, but they didn't know much about her. So present time doesn't know. So we're following what actually happened to her in one timeline. And then the other timeline is we have the current owner, um, Marty de Groot. He owns the DeVos and he's having some marital problems in the fact that his wife had has had miscarriages and they're they're kind of in this sad period of of life he's um progressing in his career i think he's a lawyer and then um one day he discovers that the frame isn't quite what it used looks odd it's not looking how he knows it to look and he discovers that it's a forgery Meanwhile, there's this Ellie, this um, art student, and she's been hired to make a forgery of the DeVos, and then it's stolen. And um, so that's in the 1950s. So you have that current 1950s timeline, but then there's also that same timeline with those people in the year 2000. So those timelines are eventually going to converge and what happens and how Marty and Ellie meet and what happens between them and then how it's all resolved. So it was good. It was it was pretty interesting. Um, I didn't wasn't always crazy about the writing style, but it was good enough. You know, I liked it. If you if you like kind of a, it was kind of had an art mystery to it. And I had read another book uh, the previous month, the, the art book that we read. It was um, a a nonfiction book that read like fiction and it had to do with art restoring and so there were some some crossovers that were that were very interesting if you're interested in those kind of things so there you go that's that the next book I read is a four star and I read it for Kate Howe's um, Kindred Spirits and that was the Rose Garden and this one kind of has a little bit of oh it's by Susanna Kearsley and it kind of has a little bit of outliner outlander feel to it and also Jamaica Inn um, by Daphne du Maurier feel so it's a dual timeline too it's also time traveling and so you have Eva Ward her sister has just died and she goes back to she's she lives in the United States and she travels back to England where they kind of grew up and is looking for a place to scatter her ashes. When she's there, she just kind of randomly gets sucked out of her current time and goes into um, 18th century England 
um, in that same area um, and then that's the same um, estate uh, I'm gonna murder it trail 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 you off trail you off well, a little well, it's a time question anyway so she's got friends in the current time and then she's got this she meets Daniel Butler and of course and he's a smuggler that's the kind of Jamaica in tie-in and she's going to fall in love with him and what's going to happen will she stay or will she go now anyway it was really good I really enjoyed it the thing that I thought uh, my critique of it my negative critique of it was I wish there was more storyline with Eva and Daniel and you could really um, see more of them falling in love more than just they they had attraction um, Eva had felt like that was home but I really wanted some more really good interaction between the two of them but other than, other than that it was really a good book and I do recommend it the next book I read is Feathers by Jacqueline Woodson and this is a um, probably a middle grade a middle grade book and it's a it's a Newbery Honor um, book I read this for June for Chantel Reads All Day for her Read Your Bookshelf Challenge, and I blew it. <laughs> um, you're supposed to read a title that had half as many letters as the book you read last month. I looked at The Spoon Stealers and said it had 15 letters, but that was the book I read for April, and it really should have been Happy Place, which would have had five letters. So I... I mispicked, but I really wanted to read this book. It's been on my bookshelf for a while, so we're going to go with the spirit of the law instead of the letter of the law, and this is the book I read. I love Jacqueline Woodson. I've read, this This might be the third or fourth book of hers that I read. I really love her book, Brown Girl Dreaming. It's kind of a poetry type um, autobiographical book it's gorgeous I highly recommend reading this one reading that one this book is about um, Franny and she's in the sixth grade and her mom is she finds out her mom's pregnant her mom has had some miscarriages before so she needs to be really careful Franny's really thinking about what hope means she has a, a brother, Sean, who's deaf. So I, I love uh, deaf characters, a, a book that has deaf characters. And they were portrayed very well. And they talk about some sign language. So that was really good. And uh, uh, Franny lives on one side of the tracks. And it kind of sounds like that's the poorer side. That's the side where African Americans more live. And on the other side of the track might be where more more white people live or more aff affluent um, folk live. And um, one day this boy comes and he's light skinned and uh, he doesn't feel like he's light skinned or white, but all of the other kids definitely you know, are saying that to him. You never learn his name, that they call him Jesus or Jesus boy. And one of the girls even wonders, Samantha, a Franny's friend, begins to even wonder if he is Jesus. And so the, this book, without being like super in your face, this book really talks about differences and how people might want to bridge um, over into those other worlds into those other places where people are different but how that can either be scary or hard and and what do you do when you want to and how can you see things in a different perspective so again very thought-provoking and very well written and very good love 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 Jacqueline Woodson and it look at isn't she she's just adorable and I love the way she's I love the way she's sitting she's up against the brick wall it's like what is with authors and brick walls there was maybe tears of price might have might have been against a brick wall but anyway she just she's really super cute I like her I love her writing 
I hope one day to read all of her books. The next book I read was The Dance Tree and by Kieran, um, Kieran, I don't know your name, Kieran, and it's covered. Let me try to find it. Kieran Millwood Hargrave. And um, I read this for the FOMO book club. We have book club. We have not discussed it yet. I did discuss it with Kat at Kat's Novel Adventures. Just a little bit. We discussed it on um, Instagram because we were just, I don't know, it's just very intriguing. It's very, uh, it's just, it's just fascinating. It's based on the true story of a time in, um, in France um, in 1518 in Strasbourg Borg, and um, women, a woman, in fact, they Frau Trophe, she starts, she's the first one who starts to dance and she just danced with, ab with abandon. So the question is, was she in a religious fervor? Was she possessed? Was she so hungry that maybe she went crazy because it does suggest that she was probably starving? And then from that, hundreds, maybe even thousands of women start to dance. And how the, the Council of 21, the, the men who ruled that area, how they stopped it, what they thought about it, and, and just what happened. So, but you're basically, inside of that story, you're following a woman named Lisbeth, and she has had 12 miscarriages. And she's married to a man named Henny, or Hen, Heinrich, and um, they're beekeepers and farmers. And um, Henny's sister, um, Agneth, Agneth, Agnethe, Nethe, <laughs> she's also called Nethe. I'm like, I can't say any of these names. Um, that's his sister, and she's been sent away for seven years to, um, to do penance for some sin that she com committed. And she's sent away to like a convent in the mountain. And Lisbeth doesn't know what happened. She came on scene. Henne married her after um, Agnes was already um, doing penance. And nobody will talk to her about why she's doing um, penance. There's also Sophie, that's Henny and Agnes' mother, and she's kind of cruel to Lisbeth, kind of taunts her about how she was able to have these healthy babies, but Lisbeth is not able to carry a baby to term. Um, this deals with um, the social injustice is done to women and people of other cultures and other, um, I don't think we say lifestyles anymore, but people who, yeah, are just different, we'll say that. And um, yeah, it's it was very interesting. It was a hard read, um, very tragic, uh, very grim, and uh, a lot of grief in this, this book. I think it does end on a happy note ish. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about it. I can't wait till we discuss it with the Fumble Book Club and see what other people thought about it. It was very interesting. The next book, the final book that I read for this month was for the Janelle Thon, and this is a book that Janelle had recommended to me. I had found it. Um, at a used bookstore and she had said what a great find it is because they're they're difficult to find. I'm hoping that I can continue reading this series. It's Evans Above by Reese Bowen. I'm currently have been enjoying her Royal Spinus series. This one's very different. Um, it's about a constable and his name is Evan, Evan Evans and he lives in this very tiny Welsh town and the uh, townspeople are just are endearing and they're colorful. Not all of them are, are terribly endearing. Kind of think of the TV show Doc Martin, and you'll get that. 
The townsfolk are what I was hoping Louise Penny's book would have would have contained more endearing, quirky characters than than characters that you don't really like. Um, but this is more of a cozy mystery than Louise Penny's is is more of a uh, a straight serious uh, mystery. And this was also very small, <laughs> very readable. Um, and just, like I said, just fun and a joy to read. There, in their little town, there is a, called, there's a, a new um, inn, a very, very large monstrosity of a hotel called Everest Inn. And the townsfolk are not crazy about this inn because there's a lot of hikers, people that come up and hike their mountain. And aren't really skilled enough to, to hike the mountain. Don't really know the territory and the weather <clears throat> and able to predict when they should come down off the mountain. So Constable Evan and his volunteer crew are often <clears throat> having to go up there and rescue people. So the manager of, um, of Everest Inn comes, the, it opens up with the manager coming to Evan during um, during chapel time and saying there's a missing person please go up and find them and he's like no no they they probably are just hiking longer or maybe they met a friend or whatever we're not I'm not getting the whole volunteer crew to go up and find a hiker and it's great weather so we'll just wait until the morning turns out the hiker had died and had been murdered in fact there's not only one murder but there's two murders and so Constable Evan is on the, um, on the job there, figuring out the murder. There's also a couple of women who think he's kind of cute. <laughs> so one's a barmaid and she's a little on the racy side. And the other one, um, so that's Betsy, I think. And then Bronwyn is the school teacher. Evan Evans isn't quite sure he's ready to be in a relationship with either women or any women at all at this point. And so you have that. Anyway, absolutely fun, absolutely uh, sweet. And like I said, kind of what I was hoping Louise Penny would be a little more serious of a, of a mystery, but yet with really sweet, quirky characters. So... If I end up not sticking with Louise Penny, at least I have Evan, Constable Evans. So anyway, that's it. That's, those are my reads for uh, June. I'm so happy to have a wrap up. This was kind of long thinking, hmm, should I make this this long? Maybe I should cut it down and turn it into two. Anyway, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. I hope all your books are good books. I hope you're having a fabulous Jane Austen July, and I'll see you again soon with some more JA content. Until then, bye!